Now, this is how bad it was. You borrowed five quid, you had to pay back seven, 40% interest. And if you missed a payment, up to 50. Now this was the only way you could get a loan. I'm not exaggerating. Hi, my name's Mick Dolman. I'm the chair of Unity Bank. In 1970, I went away to sea in the port of Melbourne. That same year, the Waterside Workers' Federation changed the lives of thousands of members by establishing their credit union, which affectionately became known as the Credo. Today, you're gonna to hear how that has led to the establishment of Unity Bank, your bank. I started on the waterfront when I was 21 years of age. The conditions down there at that time were abominable. In the gang, you rotated job by job. So you could be on deck for a whole ship. Next ship, you could have been down below, working down below. Or, and then the job after that you got, you rotated, you could be out in the gangway. My first job was a wool job. And here I am, pulling up the three and four hundred pound bales of wool and stowing them two high and three high. It was a shock to the system, my first job. It was uh, hard times down there and people had to find a way of saving money and paying their bills. Uh, I'd been in the waterfront, I did 32 years, yeah. Before permanency, people weren't sure how much money they get from week to week. The majority of wharfies still lived in the inner city, not owning their own homes, paying rent. And so we couldn't save up enough to put a deposit on a house, and in those days, if my memory serves me correct, was 25%. And then you couldn't borrow. And a lot of waterside workers didn't even have a bank account. If you got a big week, you wouldn't put it in, into the bank anyway when you had a bank account because next week you might only get two days. Locked out of the banks and other financial institutions, the Wharfers became aware of an alternative growing international cooperative force. The Federal Office had got in touch with the, the credit union group or society or whatever it was in the US. A man was sent out to tell us about it. He came out and explained how it worked and it sounded really good. And, and he said, it's, it's up to the members to run it. And it's a non-profit organisation so that, that you, you can loan money out at a lower rate and there's benefits for everybody, you know, because it, it's cheaper than a bank. There are no shareholders except the members. It's a, a better system altogether. Well, we thought it sounded like a good idea. So in March 1970, at the Wharfy Stop Work meeting in the Sydney Town Hall... Oh, my dear, that missed times. General Secretary Charlie Fitzgibbons formally proposed the establishment of a credit union to the union's membership. It would have been, well, there would have been in excess of a thousand at that meeting. Oh, yeah, all Wharfies and tubby clerks. And it was just uh, packed to the doors. And it was an enormous... Uh, response to it. You were told if you wanted to join up that day to go up to Caltex House at um, Clarence Street in Clarence at Millers Point yeah. and uh, sign up and that's what did, most of us done. So we all went up on the same day, some got there earlier than others, I got there earlier than Sid and Glenn I, got I could there earlier than me. Them. We might have called in for a beer on the way, I've yeah. got, a <laughs> got a feeling. With the credit union now officially established, more than 3,500 waterside workers throughout Australia quickly joined up. The challenge now was to build resources and staff from a very modest beginning. It was very simplified in those days. It was just deposits and then what we got in deposits and then we lent out to our members. Um, it was all passbooks, so it was all done manually. With the continued growth in funds, the credit union moved to a properly trained and professional staff to meet the membership's increasing requirements throughout Australia. From the 1970s through to the 1980s, the credit union emerged to be one of the most successful in the country, with branches established at workplaces throughout Australia. By the mid-1990s, it was positioned for a new era of growth. 
So originally the credit union was started by the Wharfies in 1970 and over the years it's gradually expanded its bond. You know, so after the Wharfies it obviously brought in the, the seafarers and it really was a credit union dedicated to that industry for, for many a year. In 1999, I was one of the first three women at Patrick's at Port Botany. I became aware of the credit union it was at the time. You know, on my first day on the waterfront, because there was a, a branch on our, in our terminal at Patrick's at Port Botany, there was a, a little window down the hallway that had um, Chrissy in it, where you could do all your banking. It was just like a normal bank branch on our work site. At, at that point, the credit union only just had spoken about expanding its services into other industrial areas. And I was lucky enough during the 17 years I had here to have two wonderful chairs. John Coombs was my chair for the first 10 years I was here. Great union leader, but also a great leader of, of a financial institution. Uh, someone who had great foresight into the future, who was commercially savvy, uh, and who, who actually brought on a number of these mergers originally. So initially what the, the board at the time decided to do, which was a great decision, was to expand into the mining and energy division of the CFMEU. Mining and energy members are spread throughout the country. Uh, wherever the coal fields are, wherever the power stations are. So all of a sudden we got branches in, in Musselbrook, we got a branch out at Lithgow. So that gave us a, a good connection to those other communities that were already serving through the Union Association. The board decided after the merger with power that it was important we looked at other opportunities uh, to scale the business up and the opportunity came up with Reliance Credit Union in Bathurst. Now the connection there for us was that we were looking at expanding into Mudgee because of the mining activity that was happening out there. We already had the branch in Lithgow, so we thought it would give us a great regional hub. So the decision was made in 2010 to merge with Reliance Credit Union. And that was our first taste of community banking. So we have a good mix, like half the business is on the union side and then the, the other half being community. So it is a good mix of industry and community. We ended up having nine mergers and no other mutual credit union or mutual bank had more mergers than this organisation did. During lengthy periods of industrial action, which unfortunately happen sometimes, you can never get a retail bank to suspend your loans or to give you extra service. Uh, Unity Bank turns up. They turn up, they've got their office in the boot of the car and they look after our people. It seems odd to tell that story to people because the, what your bank turned up to support you in a, an industrial dispute, that's just absurd. But Unity Bank have always been there doing that stuff. It is always looking after the, the person and their financial needs, but also being able to help support some of those smaller communities and charities. Part of the bank's strategy is really to be specialised around the communities and the industries that we want to serve. The reason why I wanted all my banking to be with the credit union is because of the history of it. Because it was started by us, it was started by members that came before me on the waterfront, down on the docks in Sydney, when nobody would lend money to Wharfies, when they had no banks that would look after them. They started their own credit union, that's huge, that's a big deal, and it's ours. And when I look at the where we started, first and foremost, no other credit union started with having 2,000 people in a room at once signing a petition to, to start a credit union. That did not happen anywhere else. The bank will have your back and proven that, and that it wasn't a bank of elites, you know, from the managers. People like Mark Genovese, you know, who's been a standout, now, now Danny, because they believe it. They're, they're not employees, they're the wonderful staff. It's a successful example of worker involvement in a financial institution. So vital for us that every decision we make today reflects upon the ideals and the aspirations of those that started this bank um, all those years ago. So using that legacy and that heritage that we've got is really important so that we have an eye to you know, the people that have gone before us but we also can carry that forward, making sure that we have a really strong, thriving business into the future. Never thought I'd see the day where it has grown to where it is today. But to grow as far as it's grown now, it's, it's, I find it's amazing, yeah. And I'd just like to congratulate all those that formed the credit union in those days to make it what it is today. Well, there you go. That's our history, a very proud history. The task for us going ahead 
is ensuring that the thousands of members of this organisation continue to have a banking service that is there for them and their families. So we need to make sure that the bank is strong, functional, working, and it will remain your bank, our bank, Unity Bank.